What is up everybody, Jake here. We're back with episode two of Eat Big, Get Big, Train Big. And that is exactly what I've been trying to do. <laughs> Things have been pretty hectic lately. I've, between work, um, you know, I've been working every day. Today I've actually got a day off, finally. Um, so that's why I'm making this video. But it also ties in with being exactly five weeks um, that I've been on this this bulking diet so the last video was made after three weeks and this one's being made after five so it's been another two weeks and I'm just going to up, update you guys on my diet my sups and my training and um, at the end I'll, I'll do a little bit of a uh, physique update as well I haven't even done one myself I mean I haven't even wanted to look because all I <laughs> You guys know, once you've had a six pack, all you look at in the mirror is your midsection. And it's slowly, slowly, slowly getting softer. So um, that will be interesting. But we'll do that after I work out, because I'll have a pump, of course. Um, but yeah, as I said, things are pretty hectic. Um, you know, I've been, I've been training every day. Um, that was another thing I was going to mention, is that yesterday was actually my first rest day in five weeks. And that was just due to the fact that I'd done deadlifts three days before and I'd done heavy legs two days before. And then I did my push workout when my back was fucking sore. And then it was meant to go on to um, back again yesterday. And man, there's absolutely no way in hell that I can train my back. I can't even do rows, man. My, my back's so sore. Um, obviously, I, I went hard on deadlifts. So what did I get? I think... My top set was 170 kgs, which is 385 pounds for uh, nine stop start. And so, if I was, you know, if I was going to do um, tap and go, I'd be able to get more probably. But it went from nine down to seven, and down to seven reps, and then from there I went back down to 140 kgs, which is 315 and did um, a couple of sets on that as well. So I really ripped it out, fucked my back up. But in saying that, with all the nutrition that I'm taking in, it's definitely gonna be growing, isn't it? So that is a good soreness. And I'd have to say that deadlifts is probably one of the one exercises that actually can make me sore. So I, I, I obviously can go as hard as it needs to fucking, you know, fuck some shit up. So <laughs> anyway, um, the first part of this video is going to be going through what sups I'm using. So I'm a natural bodybuilder, um, natty. Uh, I guess I can say I'm a bodybuilder now because I've actually been on stage. But um, you know, if I can say one thing, I, I don't enter into the fake natty, half natty debate anymore. Um, although I do realise that if I want to put videos out there that are going to go viral and get popular, all I have to do is mention fucking Simeon Panda and a fake natty in the same title and it's going to get thousands of views but i'm going to say now on the record that i think simeon panda's true i think he's a natural man i think uh i'm a believer i am a believer and i am going to show you guys what is fucking possible because if there's one message i want to put out there to especially young guys um smaller than me i mean i'm seeing guys that are 18 19 that are bigger than me naturally so you know it's definitely possible um, genetics is huge, but if there's, you know, there's one thing I want to say, it's that the power of the mind is, is extremely important. You believe you're going to do something and you're going to get somewhere, you're going to do it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to do it. I mean, I honestly think that thoughts can literally change the result of, of physical things, um, including this. So in another eight or nine years, fuck. I want to be as big as Simeon Panda, and I will have been training as long as him then. But for now, I've only been training, you know, four or five years, and I've got the gains I have, and we're about to make some more. But I, if you're going to go men's physique, if you're going to go NABBA bodybuilding um, in the weight classes, if you're going to go WBFF, man, you don't need that shit. Seriously, maximize your genetic potential first. 
And then if you do choose to juice after that, you're gonna get so much better results. I mean, come on. You get a skinny cunt who jumps on, who jumps on gear, um, they're just gonna look bloated, big, soft, and fucking shit. So don't do it. Build your base first, and then do what you wanna do. Do the research, do it safely, do what you wanna do, but build your base first, man. Give it five years. In saying that, let's go through my supplements, guys. It's already five minutes into this fucking video. I'm a bit of a rambler, but let's go through the subs. So the first supplement, which I'm extremely slack in taking, is creatine. We all know what creatine does. Um, I probably take 10 grams a day every three days. Three or four days, actually. I've been fucking slack. I wake up in the morning, I'm so rushed to go to work, I just, yeah, don't do it. So, but creatine is one. The protein powder I've used recently is this one. Um, I've got so many empty containers of MTS Whey in the house, it's ridiculous. So, um, but, and they, they sold out um, in Australia, so I couldn't get any more. So I bought this, I had it in New Zealand as well. It's, it's my favorite tasting protein powder ever. Um, but I don't trust this brand as much as I trust MTS, that's for sure. So, anyway, that's finished. It's finished now. So I've gone through that and I'm going to have to buy some more today, probably. Um, but yeah, protein powder, I actually haven't been having too much. Um, probably two scoops maximum a day, usually after a workout or in a morning smoothie. Um, just to, just to bump up the protein when I can't be fucked eating meat. And you know, anything else with protein in it. So that's how I use protein powder. I've heard of guys having, you know, multiple scoops, multiple times a day, and it's just not necessary. I mean, I'm trying to hit 250 grams of protein a day. Two scoops is 50 grams. That leaves only 200 grams left to get. So it's not that hard. Um, as far as a pre-workout goes, um, I've been finishing off my gold standard pre I do like this stuff, although the creatine is ridiculous, only three grams. Um, and so I have to, and the beta alanine, 1.5 grams. So really, if I really want a nice hit, I've got a double scoop, and that's way too much caffeine, which is 350 milligrams. So what I usually do is just go one scoop of this and a scoop of uh, noxygen, which is um, it's going to increase your, well, they say it doesn't increase your vascularity, but I swear it fucking does increase your vascularity, eh? And also, um, it's got a volumizing agent in there to give you a better pump. And to be honest, I'm a supplement whore, so I bought it. And that's all gone too. But um, what I was saying is pre-workout, I have one scoop of this and also another scoop of amino energy just to give it a nice taste and also a little bit extra caffeine um, and some... Um, BCAAs in there too but this is also something I use throughout the day like I'll I don't drink coffee really I'll have one of these in the morning um, I'll also have it you know as the afternoon pick me up um, and if I don't have a pre-workout on hand I just have three or four scoops of this as a pre-workout and I love this shit man I'm a huge huge fan of amino energy I've been going hard on it for probably two years now and I can't see it stopping so that is one of my favorite supplements and the last one I'm going to talk about is the newest supplement I've bought. I've never really gone for an intra-workout sup, um, intra-workout carb supplement, but I have decided to buy one, and I've gone with Glycoject um, on their on their um, reviews, and people that I've talked to have had it, and it tastes alright. And also, it obviously doesn't come from, from sugar. Um, it comes from, it's got no sugar in it. It comes from uh, complex sources of carbs. So, what is it? Derived from potato, rice, and corn. It's got citrulline malate in there, um, and a couple of other ingredients. Because it's not only an intra-workout carb source, but it also is designed to accelerate nutrient transport and volumization. Anyways, watermelon flavor, tastes pretty good, it's fucking expensive, but 
two scoops is 50 grams of carbs and I put that in a shaker, take it with me and um, I definitely do feel the difference, um, especially through a leg workout or a back workout. Halfway through I'll start sipping on this and could be placebo but it's not because it's 50 grams of carbs so it's given me energy and I do feel it and I do like that as a supplement. So anyways, that is the first part of the video guys and it's shit 10 minutes oh my god if you guys are still watching thank you it's going to be worth it because um we're going to go to the gym now i've got a chest no i've got a, a push day so chest shoulders and arms well chest shoulders and triceps um i hit triceps two days ago so I'm not sure about them but chest and shoulders definitely going to get a fucking good pump we're going to go kill it so uh I'm going to have a pre-workout meal because it's first thing in the morning and then I'm going to have a pre-workout drink and then we're going to go to the gym and smash it. So after the workout I'm going to go through my uh, my training schedule. I've, I've got a training log that I've been doing for the last five weeks. Uh, I've never done that before. So I've been, well I'll show you guys when I uh, when I get there, it's on the computer, so we'll do a bit of a, a voiceover thing and have a look at it. So, until then, I'll see you in the gym. All right, guys, what is going on? We're here with a push workout at Anytime Fitness. No, it's not Anytime Fitness, it's Outback Gym and Fitness here in Alice Springs. Um, it's a wicked gym, it's, it's big, it's nice and open. Um, there's a couple of little rooms off to the side that you can see. Uh, squat room, deadlift, deadlift platform. It's fucking cool. But uh, today we're doing a push workout, obviously starting off with the incline Smith machine. Um, most of my workouts these days, or for the last five weeks at least, have started off with like a, a compound movement, um, either 5x5 five five or 10x10. Ten ten. So obviously I can use a, a certain weight and over time increase the weight or increase the reps. And then I can measurably make progress. So today, you're seeing the warm-up that I did uh, before I got into my first first set of 10. So I did some, some rotator cuff warm-ups, uh, really focusing on, on actually rotating the shoulder, not just forcing it, using a nice and light weight. I used a 2.5 kilogram plate um, to warm up my rotator cuffs. And then went and did a first warm-up set with 10 kgs on each side. Um, just repped it out, I think I got 20 reps or something. And here is my first set of 10 of the 10 by 10 um, and <laughs> don't ask me why but I actually recorded every single set and rep so I do speed it up here's set number two and we're just gonna roll through it so the rest of the workout went as follows after this 10 by 10 I went to the seated dumbbell press I did uh, four, four working sets uh, starting off with a with 15 kilograms, I went up to my normal working set weight of 32 kgs. And honestly, guys, as you'll see, um, I just did not feel it. I felt like my shoulders were going to fucking rip after doing all this work um, on the incline press. So I decided to drop it down, which sucks, of course. No one likes not using their um, their usual weight, but I dropped it down to 25 kg and did another three working sets on that. Um, then following that, I still wanted to do some more some more pressing, so I just used the 20 kg dumbbells and did some standing dumbbell press, as you'll see. So I did two sets of that to failure. Um, following that, we went to some isolation exercises, did some seated side laterals. Um, I'm always looking to build build the side later, uh, side side delts. Always looking to make make myself look wider. Um, it's all about that illusion on stage, isn't it? So uh, seated seated side lateral raises. I did a full warm up set, as you'll see, um, with a five kg five kg dumbbells. Um, that got my shoulders really nice and warm. And then we went into some um, some big drop sets with as many reps as I can, doing full reps, and then. 10 partial reps after that. So you'll see all that guys. Uh, following that, the last exercise was a pec fly. So we did two compound movements and two isolation movements. Felt really awesome after this workout. Um, you know, everything's all good. I may not have hit the numbers I wanted to, but I got the pump. Um, I definitely got the volume in and it was a good workout. So 
keep watching guys, here's a wicked track that I found, it's called Defeat the Night, it's uh, non-copyright, so you guys can all listen to it, and you can use it in your own videos, and yeah, I'm just going to wrap it out here, I do come to the camera again at the end of the video, or the end of the training session, um, in about three more minutes, and then we continue on in the video, so thanks for watching, and here is actually, yep, nah, <laughs> So those are 32.5s, um, I have repped those out for 8 before but today I just wasn't feeling it. Too much work on the chest already, so we dropped it down to 25s and repped it out. So here we go guys, I'll catch you guys later, thanks for watching.
little bit. No triceps, just shoulders and just chest. But it was good. All right, so post workout, um, let's go find somewhere to do a physique update. See how fat I am. guys so that is what I'm looking like feeling very soft at the moment um, yeah, there's no way no way around that but uh, some days I feel good some days I don't we're five weeks into a bulk um, if I'm already feeling like that it's probably not a good idea but really I have only myself to blame and I can see exactly why because I've tracked everything that I've eaten and drunk the whole entire time the whole five weeks I've had a 35 day streak on my fitness pal. So I've actually been more more um you know consistent with tracking my calories and macros now that I'm on a bulk than what I did when I was on a cut. So that's pretty stupid. But anyways, it means that any results that I see on the scales or in the mirror, I can um see exactly why. So uh basically over the first three weeks um I I wanted to bring down my fats, so my fats were probably at about 130 grams a day over the first three weeks, and that's just because, you know, I was sort of binging on a few things um, post comp and stuff, but I did manage to keep it under control. So 130 was pretty high. I wanted to bring that down to about 100 grams a day. Um, carbs was around about 550. I wanted to keep that about the same, maybe 600. And protein was up around 300 grams a day, um, which is way too much. So I brought it down to 250, and was meant to stick to that so over week number four November 11th to 17th um, my average calories were at 4,387 and that's what it looked like there so that's pretty much the same amount of calories as I had been having in the first three weeks um, and the macros average protein was 250 average carbs was 585 with 200 grams of sugar, which is a lot, but I do have some fruit, so some comes from that. And fat was down to 109 grams a day, so that was, I was pretty happy with that. Um, probably, you know, that's a good amount of food, like, I'm not, it, I tend to like get more hungry the more I eat, so, you know, that that is actually quite a good amount of food. I mean, I know I'm putting on fat, but fuck it, you know, I'm gonna enjoy this sort of off season as well, so I'm never gonna be real strict on myself when I don't have a competition or something to um, to prepare for. So that's what dieting's for. Anyway, so that was week number four, 250 protein, 585 carb, and 109 fat. And then last week, I've just finished, uh, just finished the seven days, and protein was averaging 268, carbs 608, and fat 123. So it was actually quite high. Um, and I actually haven't really checked these results until now, so I'm probably not that happy with that. I mean, I would have put on put on too much body fat for my liking last week, I'd say, but we can only get better from there. So, coming, moving forward, um, 
gonna try and stick at the same amounts, 100 grams of fat a day, 250 protein and 600 carb. And continue on my way up to 100 kgs. So you saw my weigh-in before. Uh, that is with my shoes on which weigh like over a kg so I'm probably weighing like yeah in the morning straight away in the morning without eating or drinking anything probably like 93 and a half and my lowest weigh-in was 86.9 um, and that was you know pretty dehydrated so yeah I've put on six kgs in five weeks but uh, I put on probably three of those straight away um, so yeah, probably three kgs in five weeks, well, four kgs in five weeks, and we're going to continue with this and see how we go, guys. So I'm going to go inside now, make a feed, which I have been enjoying, man. I've been enjoying being able to eat a lot of food. That's, that's awesome, because <laughs> I do like to eat. And another thing is a 10,000 calorie challenge is uh, on its way. So stay tuned for that. That'll be fun. But either way... I'll run you through my training. I've talked for another fucking, what, five, six minutes, oh my God. It's gonna be a long video again. Luckily, I'm not making them too often, so stay tuned and we'll run through my training. All right, guys, so here is the training log that I was talking about. So it's pretty basic. I mean, weight training record from Monday the 19th, two days post-comp. We started on the Monday with chest and biceps and I weighed myself and I was 89.7 kilograms. Um, from there, I just continued it. I didn't know how long I was going to keep this up. I just wanted to make sure that I hit everything twice a week, basically. So we started at 89.7, went across. By Thursday, I'd already gone up to 91.5. And then basically from there, it's just slowly, slowly the weight has increased. Um, and on a day when I've, when I've hit a PB or when I've hit a, a, good, a good set or something, I've recorded that too, so I can also you know, check back on what weights I was using. And in the future, I can uh, make sure I'm making gains. So, yeah, as I said, so, I mean, with chest, for example, chest there, chest, chest again, chest, 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 and chest today. So, obviously, chest I'm hitting twice a week. That's something I really want to bring up, so I'm making sure, but everything else I am as well. Um, or at least trying to. So uh, this has really come in handy. I tend to forget what I've actually trained, so um, I'm definitely going to keep using this. And as well as that, I've also got my uh, nutrition little log here. So all the data that I get from my fitness pal, I bring over into this. It makes it a lot easier for me to read. Um, I get averages of the week. I can calculate different things, and it's just really easy. It gives me an overview of everything. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying like really making the most of this. And that's actually meant to be, so I'm on day 35 right now. So let's change that. And oh, I'll delete that. So this is the, um, today is day 35. I actually haven't, haven't put that data in there yet, but I will. So yeah, a really great tool to have. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort to, to you know, set it up, and then you're sweet. You're all good. So, eat big, get big, train big. Episode two is done and dusted. It is fucking long. Um, sorry guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but basically, yeah, I just want to bring you guys a real, uh, real account of a bulk phase, I suppose. And um, yeah, just bring you guys something different. Um, I'm a natural bodybuilder. I will continue to be so. And please keep following me because we're going we're gonna to make something good out of this. So cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.